Northern Ireland as their as a as a as a country or as a state or whatever you want to call it, they're understanding how important money is to them. Um, mm-hmm. Because there's so many p- political problems going on over there that before you couldn't have a golf tournament there. You know, you couldn't do anything mm-hmm. over there. So now basically what they're telling the world is like, we want you to come here and spend your money here because money is going to generate a lot of things, a lot of businesses from the, for them over there. I don't know if this, I, I can't, I, I don't know. I'm not really big into golf, so I don't know if it's the first time they had it there or whatever the case may be. But I know just listening to the analysts talk and reading, mm-hmm. there always has been some some type of political problem in Northern Ireland. And so far, um, it seems like it's settled down and the golf over there went well. So you you never know what to, what's going to be next for that for them over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and to Kev, I mean, that country split in half. I mean, there's Ireland and there's Northern Ireland. So they, and that all goes back to religion between the Catholics and the Protestants. That goes back to the biblical days. Um, you know, they, they've they had issues with that. I mean, um, with the Open Championship, the tournament they just got done playing, there's a rotation. So Port Rush is on that rotation. I don't know how often. So I think they play now. I think there's like eight golf courses on that rotation that they play on. So just like the U.S. Open, it rotates. And the only tournament, the only major in golf that stays where it's at is at Augusta. The Masters stays at Augusta National. It doesn't move every year. But the other three rotate every year. So if you get a golf course, I mean, uh, the U.S. Open was at Pebble Beach this year in California. Uh, The Mm -hmm. PGA was at Beth Page in New York. Um, so those will, and then, then, you know, they'll tell you what golf courses they're going to be playing next year. And then they'll give you a rotation of the future of the future, you know, future years and stuff like that. So okay. it's just, it, it that, I mean, that's how, that's how they do it. Again, like I said, the only major that stays put is the masters. They won't ever move it off Augusta national because that's where Bobby Jones designed that golf course and designed that tournament. So that tournament's never going to move off Augusta national. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I want to switch gears real quick on you, and then, I'll, then, I'm, then I'm gonna let you. Then I'm gonna let you go, and you can do your thing. Um, okay. I was listening. I was listening to Bruce Arrington today about Tampa okay. Bay, and he made a very good point about um, about the quarterback. And Jim. he was on a he was on a Bruce Arrington show, and he said to him, he says, um, "What do you think about Jameson West?" He says, "Well, you know what." He said, I've been around a lot of young guys that made a lot of mistakes. He said, but they matured. He said, when they mature, they don't make those same mistakes. And he said, and I, he said, I see that. He said, I see that in Jameson Winston. He said, but you know what else I see? He said, he said, he said he works so hard at, 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 at he works so hard at his skill at his craft. He mm-hmm. said sometimes he wish he would calm down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, really? And so I'm just listening to him talk, and he says, you know, he just, his, his work ethic is just extremely well. And they asked him, like, well, what do you think that was the problem with Tampa Bay? He says he didn't have they, – they don't have a team to surround him by to make him good. Mm-hmm. He, said, and that's, and he said, that's what we're going to do now. He said, our defense is, is quick. He says, offensively, we're going to – you know, we – you know how every team does in the first couple of weeks. They're going to struggle until they get it together because you don't see a lot of the starters playing during preseason. So when the first game comes, depending on how many reps they get, depends on how, pretty much how well they do the first game. He says, but our defense is really quick, and I think we're going to do well. He says, and we got, we got some offensive players for him. Um, he says, so I think we're going to do well. I mean, and he really, Bruce Ayers really talked well about about Jameson Winston, which I never heard any other coach talk about him like he did, you know. And you know how you can, you know how you, when you hear a coach talk about a player, you were like, yeah, he he blow smoke. But Bruce Harrison was sincere. He was sincere about 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 Jameson Winston. Now, I think if Jameson has a decent year this year, um, and I'm saying, you know, they're in a tough division. Um, they if, are. if they can, if they can, if they could come in, if they if they come close to playoffs, 
Like I said, they go 9-7 because there's a possibility that you could have two teams in that division go 10-6. But if they can go 9-7 or somewhere like that or 10-6 and, and don't make the playoffs, then I think that's an add up that's an add up boy for for Jameson. And he might get that he might get that nice payday because who's Aronson like that kid. And he said he also said that Jameson came to a camp that he was at one time and he put his Super Bowl ring on Jameson Winston and Jameson Winston said to him, he says, I'm gonna get one of these one day. He said he said and I don't know if that changed his life, changed him as a kid. I want to play football now, he said. But that, I want to. I want to change people, you know. So that really that that hit that hit home for me with Bruce Harrison because I know Bruce Harrison is is a genuine guy. He loves coaching football. Mm-hmm. He even said, you know, being in the booth is okay. He said, but he got the itch back and he wanted to come back. So, what's your thoughts on that right there? Well, I mean, Kevin, if 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 I think I'll be honest with you, I think if the Bucks go do better than five and eleven, I think. Jameis will be back. I mean, the thing with him is the problem with, with, with Winston has been that he tries to make things happen every play. I really mm-hmm. honestly, um, with, with Bruce Arians, I think the, the thing about Bruce is all the coaches that he's had have been around him for a long time. I mean, I know Todd Bowles left and became a coach with the Jets, but he came back. Uh, Byron Leftwich is the offensive player. He was offensive player with him in Arizona. So they know, you know, this is this is a, a collective bunch of coaches that have been together for a long time. Um, and I don't I don't know if you know this or not, but Bruce uh, has a all of his co- assistant coaches are all African American. His defensive coordinator, offense coordinator, and special teams coach are all African American. I think they're the only team in the NFL that has three African American coaches, and he has two female coaches. So Bruce is trying well, to bring did, all. Yeah, I, did, I did not know that. Um, and, you know, it was funny because they were talk. He was they were talking about you know about about the penalties. Like you can throw a flag if you think it's a defensive pass interference, and if it's mm-hmm. not, they can say it's an offensive pass interference. He says then that means that that goes against you. Bruce said, "Well, you know that's a good thing." He said because I already hired one of the best referees that they had in the business to tell me if it's right or wrong. If, the, if if I should throw a flag, if I shouldn't throw a flag. Now I don't know if every team has done that as well as he, done that as he did, has done, but I mean that's thinking outside the box. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like he yeah. got a referee in the booth with him. He's like he's like he like yo Bruce throw the flag. Bruce don't throw the flag. Yeah, yeah. Bruce throw the flag. Bruce don't throw the flag. You know yeah. so but to know that all his coaching staff he has a lot of uh, Afro African Americans on his coaching staff. And I, I, I'm going to do some more research on that because that's cool. That's really good for him. Yeah, uh, and and you know I think if if Kev, if anyone can fix Jameis, it's Bruce. I mean, think of the quarterbacks yeah, I, that he's worked with, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, Andrew Luck, you know, Carson Palmer. I mean, all these guys. I mean, other than other than Luck, you know, he's brought all the, you know, he's he's coached most of these guys back, you know, uh, not so much with. Roethlisberger, because again, he's been pretty good since he became a Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, but I mean, he's coached a lot of these, like Carson Palmer. He like revolutionized his career in Arizona. So exactly. I mean, anyone, anyone can can get Jameis on the right path. It would be him. Um, it would be him. And I and the funny thing is, you know, they were talking about this on our local Tampa Bay Sports Radio today. On my way to into work, I listened to the radio. And they were hoping that Jameis would be the first Buccaneer quarterback to get a second contract. Because, again, this team has never had a quarterback get to a second contract. And that's amazing. I remember you to, told me that. To think about that. And, again, I think, to be honest with you, Kev, if they go 8-8, eight, 9-7, eight, I, I can't see how they would not bring him back for another season. Because unless he has an absolute – unless they go – you know, five and eleven again, or four and ten, and they don't—they're not competitive. And he's, you know, throwing picks and fumbling the ball. I—I I just don't see them not bringing him back. He would have to have an absolute dismal year for them because he's got the weapons. He, you know, he's got Chris Godwin, he's got Mike Evans. You know, he's got uh, uh, the kid out of Alabama, uh, O.J. Howard. Cameron Braid is back. He's got—I mean—and then you have. 
Um, you know, the running back situation is kind of up in question. I'll be talking about that later on when I get into my camp notes about the Bucks and the Patriots. But I mean, they, you know, they talk about Ronald Jones in the second round pick, and he was a no he was looked like he was scared to death last year. So unless Bruce can get him to, to spice it up, I mean, they're Peyton Barber's the only option that they have at the medium moment. So they have to do let, something. Let me, Go ahead. Let me ask you let me ask you a question. Do you think that uh LaShawn McCoy, McCoy would do good in Tampa Bay because Buffalo was talking about cutting him or trading him. So if, if they're in that situation, do you think that that helps that helps out that offense? It helps out um Jameson Winston at all? Do you think he would be a good fit in Tampa Bay? Kev, I think it would be. I mean, Peyton Barber, you know, he's a good running back, but again, you know, he ha- they haven't had a thousand yard rusher in a while. I mean, I think the last one they had was Doug Martin. So it's been a while since they've had a thousand yard rusher. And Shady McCoy would do very well, you know, here. I think he would do well in the offense. And I think the more help that you can give Jameis, the better off he's going to be. I mean, the more pressure that's off of him, the better off the Bucks will be. And I mean, I think in the end, what will happen is if the see the I, I talked to uh, a local broadcaster on my show last week, interviewed him from 620. And he told me that the one thing you're going to hear about the Bucks defense this year is speed. Or I'm sorry, not speed. It was attack. And I said, okay, so are you telling me that you're going to remind me of the 2002 Bucks when they won the Super Bowl, you know, with Brooks and Sapp and Barber and Lynch? I said, that was a defense that no one could beat. That When that defense was on, when Monty Kiffin had them playing, you know, the, that, that mm-hmm. defense that they played, I mean, it was hard to beat them, you know? So, you know, me personally, I mean, if they can get back to anything like that, even just half of that would be nice because they give up a lot of points. And if you are going to give up, you know, 35 points, you're putting a lot of pressure on Winston, and that means they have to score 42 or 38, exactly. you know, because, again, and there's another question that's going to come up too in camp is they drafted Rudy Gay out of Utah, the kicker, and that, that's been a position that has been a question mark for the Bucks for the past few seasons. They drafted Roberto Aguayo out of FSU. That didn't work out. You know, so they have, you know, they have Cairo Santos, who they got, you know, through the grapevine last year, and now he has competition. But in the end of the day, you know, what, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how it all, it all works out. But Bruce, you know, I, he, I, they, they said the best acquisition the Bucks made this offseason was getting Bruce Aarons. So, again, Kev, we'll have to. We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see because it sure would be nice to see them win some football games. Again, I'm not a Bucks fan, but because I'm in the area, I get, to, you know, I get to, to, to listen to them, you know, listen to them. And I hope they do well. Right. I really honestly do. I hope they do well, you know, in all honesty. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be hard because I think, Jason Light's on the hot seat. Their general manager. He's five. You know, he's five and eleven. Five and eleven. You brought in Bruce Arians. Yeah, that may have saved your job for at least a season. But if you go, they go bad again this year. There's no way he keeps his job. I, I just, I can't see that happen. Okay. So, hey man, yeah. it's good. It's, it's good talking. It's good talking to you. And I finally got a chance to come on. Well, I appreciate um, it. I, I I haven't been. I, this I said earlier today. I said I said to my wife. I said I got to get on the show on Thursday. I said I keep. I said I keep forgetting because I I'll be I'll be lifting, um, you know. So that right there, you know, I'll be lifting. And sometimes I don't have customers in my car, and I want to call in, and then somebody gets in the car, and I can't call in. But today I did no lifting. Um, just chilling, relaxing, enjoying the day. So I got I got I got in, and I'm glad. I, again, Kev, I appreciate, you know, again, I appreciate you and Dana, you know, on Monday and, and you know, kind of getting me, giving me the the push. I shouldn't say push in the right direction, kind of the motivation to, to do my own show. So, again, I, I thank both of you guys because I wouldn't be doing this right now if it wasn't for you guys. All right, man. You take care. Have a good show. You too. You too. Thank you. Okay.
All right, guys, that was Kevin. He's he. I, I call his show every Monday. If you guys want to check out another cool show, uh, check out the Barbershop Sports um, on Mondays. They're on from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, check on them, man. What's up, Mike?